Hey YouTube, Kira Twink here, bringing you all my Egyptian God card Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile for Post the Megatins 2022. A lot of you have requested a deck profile on the Egyptian Gods that focuses on all three of these divine monsters. I've done individual decks for all three of them as well, so definitely do check those ones out if you're a fan of each individual God card. But a lot of you, like I said, wanted to focus on a deck profile that used all three of the God cards. It definitely does focus on a playstyle that uses the new card they got from the latest Megaton for the majority of their plays because they just very much help with the actual setup that you're meant to do, just special summoning out and making use of the many different Egyptian gods, including Slifer, Obelisk, and Ra. So let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So for the uh, count for each of the Egyptian gods, I'm running two Slifer the Sky Dragon, two Obelisk the Tormentor, and two Wing Dragon of Ra. Now these numbers I was debating on going even lower but then after just you know difficulty in seeing the numbers for each one I decided to go with two of each uh three was way too much I was opening up multiple numbers of the Egyptian gods you want enough to at least be able to see one of the copies in your hand and having six is fine I even consider dropping the winged dragon of Ra to one copy because you are able to search it with the new spell for the winged dragon of Ra being the true sun god so this could be an additional spot if you wanted to bump any of the other numbers we run in the deck but two slifer two obelisk are fine where they're at for sure but i'm going for the two copy count for each one of the gods for this deck profile and with them they each like i said have very easy setup if you were to get obelisk out with his new spell the breaking ruin god and uh, slifer with the revived sky god and even the winged dragon of raw has a setup combo when you open up its spell so at least having that spell of each one or trap for slifer's case gives you access to that specific god card much easily than the three tribute which is still an option in this deck just not as easily relied upon as some of the other plays we can do and since the winged dragon of raw does have its other forms as well i run one copy of immortal phoenix and the one copy of sphere mode as well to utilize because each one will then summon out the other and vice versa with sphere mode being able to summon out the winged dragon of raw immortal phoenix going back into the sphere mode and being able to set up immortal phoenix after the actual winged dragon of raw is sent to the graveyard for the other monster count i also run three copies of guardian slime this card is helpful because it can also be used to get out the egyptian god slime which can be used as a three of tribute for any of the egyptian gods and also just more of a defense card against them as well but three copies of this also acts as a stall against your opponent just being able to special summon this card out if you take uh battle or effect damage and then being that barrier that you can use against your opponent thanks to this card for more of the monster setup, I also run three copies of Reactor Slime. This card gives you the two additional tokens you can use on the field when it's activated effect. It gives you those two monsters. You have the three tributes needed for your Egyptian god. And depending on the god card you summon out, whether it be Obelisk or Slifer or Ra, you have all of these special summon options available to you and are able to summon out those god cards, especially in Slifer's case without having to use up your hand. But the other ones can still be utilized quite easily, especially Obelisk with the Reactor actor slime since even if you have to utilize some of your hand to summon this card out its attack points and defense points won't be you know affected by the number of cards in your hand or the life points you spent and I also run three copies of Angel 1. With this card, you can special summon it by revealing a level 7 or higher monster in your hand. You can only special summon it once per turn this way, and while you control this special summon card, you can tribute someone one level 7 or higher monster in attack position during your main phase, in addition to your normal summoner set, giving you the play with the Reactor Slime for that additional summon. And we run a good high count of high level monsters in this deck, so an easy reveal for you to then special summon out Angel 7. And this will just be your additional summon to then summon out those Egyptian gods if you do summon out cards like reactor slime as well with the additional play for the turn except for divine beast monsters for the normal or special summon with this card so remember that so along with angel one you'll want to summon out this card first and then the reactor slime because then for the rest of the turn is when you're shut down thanks to reactor slime and i also run three copies of tellius the little angel to finish off the main deck monster count if it's sent from the monster zone to the graveyard you can special summon one tellia wing token onto the field and you can also banish this card from your graveyard and one spell from your hand to special summon two teller wing tokens also you cannot special summon for the rest of this turn except from your hand giving you more of a special summon along with cards like angel one for more of that additional summon setup being able just to send this card giving you two tokens and then the additional ones and monster setup thanks to angel one 
And that is it for the main deck monsters. We'll now move on to the spells. Like I said, the new spells from the Megaton are very important, so I'm running three copies of the True Sun God. When this card is activated, you can add one, the Winged Dragon of Ra, or one card that mentions it from your deck to your hand, except for the True Sun God. Monsters except the Winged Dragon of Ra cannot attack the turn they are special summon. And once per turn during your main phase, you can send this card from the field or one Winged Dragon of Ra, Mortal Phoenix, from your deck to the graveyard to send one Winged Dragon of Ra from your monster zone to the graveyard. So this is the play I spoke of, being able to at least summon out your Winged Dragon of Raw with this setup and then being able to activate it for the send to set up the Immortal Phoenix to take out some more monsters your opponent may crawl. It's a definite three of because it just adds the one Egyptian God card to your hand and then also activates the additional play for you to use, including the play in which we use Ancient Chant, which can also search out the Winged Dragon Raw from your deck or graveyard to your hand. And then you can tribute summon one monster during your main phase this turn in addition to your normal summoner set. It doesn't lock you into Winged Dragon of Raw, so you can tribute summon out the other God cards if they're already in your hand, but you have to search out for the Winged Dragon of Raw using your your ancient chant but you can even just use the true sun god to search out ancient chant and then search and add the winged dragon raw thanks to this card I also run three copies of the Breaking Ruin God. Now this, you know, you have to have Obelisk in your hand or a graveyard. So with this play, it lets you just special summon out your Obelisk the Tormentor from your hand or graveyard. And if you do, it's unaffected by your opponent's car effects this turn. If you tribute two or more monsters you control at the same time to activate your car effect while you control Obelisk, you can banish this card from your graveyard to banish all monsters in your opponent's graveyard. If you do, inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each. So this can burn away more of your opponent's damage using your Obelisk on the field after it destroys your opponent's monsters to then just get rid of those monsters in the graveyard are taking away the potential to come back from the destruction that that uh, Egyptian god card on the field uh, used against your opponent. I also run three Soul Crossing. I used this card in each one of the Egyptian god card decks that I made. There were some variations with each one, like some decks where I only used Angel 01, some where I only used Reactor Slime. Soul Crossing remained consistent in all three just because it's a great tribute option for a quick play, being able to tribute someone out that Egyptian god, even using your opponent's monsters, but if you do that, you're limited to one card effect per turn alongside your Egyptian God one, but it's a definite three of because this card just can use your opponent's resources that easily. I also run two card advance with the lower numbers for the Egyptian God cards that I am running. This card just helps with search power and along with cards like Angel One and Ancient Chant, it's just another additional normal summoner set for your cards and that would be the biggest play you need to set up your Egyptian God cards anyway. And then for the rest of the one-ofs for the spells, I run one Millennium Revelation. This card is needed for the send and setup, letting you summon out Winged Dragon of Ra with Monster Reborn. So along with the other two being able to summon out with Monster Reborn, you just need this card for that setup. You can use, once again, with the True Sun God, being able to search this card out, and Ancient Chant being also able to utilize it. One Monster Reborn for those other plays. And the Foolish Burial can set up Obelisk or Slifer in your graveyard for you to then special summon back with the Breaking Ruin God or your trap card, which the only other trap we are running in the deck is what I would say is one of the best cards in the deck altogether, and that is the Revived Sky God. The activation of this card cannot be negated, and its effects cannot be negated. You special summon one Slifer from your graveyard, and then each player draws, so they have six cards in their hand, and you can banish this card from your graveyard, place one Monster Reborn from your deck or graveyard on top of your deck. Then if a Divine Beast monster is in your graveyard, draw one card. You need the draw for the Monster Reborn, which we run as well, and also six cards in your hand, can, which can just replenish your setup for whatever play you may have wanted to go for late game if you have the deck to draw into still and the Egyptian god cards to use. And now moving on to the extra deck for the extra deck monsters. One Egyptian God Slime. If you have multiples of this card, you can run additional copies. Along with the card you can take out for the Winged Dragon of Raw. You can always reduce this number to one and add one Metal Reflect Slime to potentially get out Egyptian God Slime. Along with your Reactor Slime, being able to search and set up that card as well. I didn't run it in the deck because I just find the Revived Sky God to be the more important trap to run in this deck for sure. But Egyptian God Slime being a protection card for your Egyptian Gods and still being able to count as three tributes for it is definitely useful in any Egyptian God deck and definitely useful in one where we're trying to get all three add onto the field. I also run one Salmon Great Almirage. The rest of the extra deck is pretty generic, but if you don't have your God card and you have some of the effect monsters that you run in the deck, you definitely want to be able to get out these cards as quickly as possible. So one Salmon Great Almirage, one Link Rebo, along with one Relinquished Anima, 
one barricade board blocker, one IP Mascarena, one Lena the Light Charmer, one Area of the Water Charmer, one Underclock Taker, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Unicorn, and one Apollosa to finish off the Link monsters. And for the Xyz monsters, one Gustav Max, one Sky Palace Gongra die, and one Divine Arsenal Zeus. You don't get out two level 10 monsters often, but it can happen with this deck, like I said, with the new support from the Megaton. And then as for some of the go-to plays in the deck, we'll go through each one of the generic Egyptian God setup cards that you can use for the play style in this deck. If you go for the True Sun God search, if you have one of the other three as we run in the deck, which is Ancient Chant in your head, you have your Immortal God Phoenix setup play, activating the True Sun God to when it's activated, add one Winged Dragon to Raw or one card that mentions it from your deck to your hand. You'll add the one of Millennium Revelation. When you activate this card, you can send one Divine Beast from your hand to the graveyard to add one Monster Reborn from your deck or graveyard to your hand so then with this it's great because you just send a divine beast monster from your hand to the graveyard to add one monster reborn from your deck or graveyard to your hand and then being able to do that you can even just send obelisk or slifer to the graveyard setting them up for your other graveyard plays while still setting up the monster reborn in your hand as well to then even just special summon them back onto the field but what's great is then you also have this and then after activating the true sun god along with millennium revelation on the field you activate the ancient chant to add Add the Winged Dragon Raw to your hand. And with that, you have your play for your Divine Beast. But also for the search, you can go for the Ancient Chant first, searching out Winged Dragon Raw, sending that for the play for the Millennium Revelation, activating Monster Reborn, summoning Raw back onto the field, and then sending the true Sun God's play setup to send your Immortal Phoenix to the graveyard. And with that, sending the Winged Dragon Raw to the graveyard to special summon Immortal Phoenix back onto the field. And then after that, setting up up your sphere mode which in turn can summon the wing dragon raw back on the field afterwards i went over this with my wing dragon raw deck but this is still usable in this deck as well both of slifer and obelisk can fall into the category if they're set up in the graveyard so once again with the millennium revelation play or if you send them with foolish burial you can then set each one on the field with your trap card the revived sky god for slifer or the breaking ruin god for obelisk with this you also have the special summon setup for each one of these monsters on the field being slifer's play to draw six cards in your hand is immensely powerful and it'll also be activated more than likely on your opponent's turn with this trap but if you activate the breaking ruin god along with obelisk on the field you can then use the angel of one or the Tellius, the little angel on the field as well to gain you additional tokens to be attributed for obelisk and then using the spell once it's already in the graveyard since you summoned obelisk on the field to banish it to destroy and then banish all the monsters your opponent had as well but that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed. Like I said, a lot of you wanted an update to the Egyptian God deck that utilizes all three monsters. And I hope you all enjoyed this as well. It was definitely a lot of fun to make. And as always, until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And Kira Twig out.